Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another patch notes review. A big old rundown 2.3b rolling up, bringing some of our favorite sentinels to the wild rift. Let's uh, take a look at these changes, see how they'll fix up the meta or break it. And I'll give you guys the rundown of everything you need to know coming up to the next patch. So let's get straight into it. So, patch notes 2.3b, exciting stuff, exciting stuff. I think like I say every patch recently that I'm pretty happy with the state of the meta. <laughs> I just noticed that Excalendrel is actually, uh, this is massive avatar. He's also looking at these right now. So we're actually recording our videos simultaneously. Wow, maybe we should kiss. Um, anyway, I've said pretty recently that I feel like all the patches have been a pretty good state. Um, obviously there's been a couple of outlier champs, you know, Garen, probably the biggest one who continues to be a bit of an outlier, but overall, I think the, the game's been in pretty good state for a while now. So just excited to see what kind of ideas and additions they have. New champions, Lucian the Purifier, love Lucian, super fun AD mid laner, uh, also an ADC. But it's traditionally been played in the mid lane for quite a while now, to be honest. Yeah, just super excited for him. I love his playstyle. He's super, like, super hyper aggressive. Uh, ADC mid, AD damage, lots of uh, trading, lots of different mechanical movements, like uh, animation cancels, making good use of his passive. His ultimate's really cool. Uh, really excited for this champ. Senna the Redeemer's coming. I'm not really sure what to think of Senna, because she kind of depends, you know? It just depends how they add her. Um, traditionally she's played as like, uh, recently in PC, it's like a fasting ADC, <laughs> which is like a weird term, but it basically means she has a passive where when minions die near her, they drop souls and she can pick them up to get gold. And she also buys like a support item in PC League that lets her hit enemies to, to gain gold. Um, and she'll lane with like basically just any kind of like physical, or not physical, like melee carry, something like Lee Sin. Sometimes she lanes with like Tom Kench, if you guys know her PC, but you know, Wukong, they have these like really weird aggressive lanes where they have like an additional carry who's kind of farming instead of a support and Senna gets enough gold from this playstyle that she can still remain being like the core AD carry. So it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know if the shared gold from Wild Rift to be enough in combination with the souls to keep that playstyle going, but could definitely be the case. Um, I think either way she'll be a really interesting addition to the meta. Traditionally more of a utility at, at ADC like Ash, but she does have really, really good scaling. One of the strongest late game carries. Kind of a cool champion, uh, really unique and, and could add a lot of interesting flair to the game and to drafts in general. Skins coming. True damage, Senna, Hired Gun, Lucian. Why do we get Hired Gun, man? It's like Pink Aurelia all over again. I think there's a cool Aurelia skin coming later in the patch. Um, I don't know if you ever guys saw those, those emote leaks at some point, but there was like the emote for... People didn't know who the emotes were, but uh, we've seen the splash art for Sentinel Aurelia now. So I think Sentinel Aurelia is coming in 2.3c probably. Maybe we'll get a cool Lucian skin down the line. Because <laughs> I think Hired Gun is like probably the lamest one, I'm not gonna lie. It's, uh, it has, it, the particles are okay, but uh... He definitely has a bunch of cool skins, so kind of a shame he didn't get any of them yet. True Damage Shadow though, really cool. Love the skin. It's got really good sound effects. Got some baubles coming, Icon Border, pretty cool one. Lucian Emo, Senna Emo, two different icons and three different spawn tags. So this is an interesting, this is like the Kha'Zix Rengar spawn tag event, I guess. Um, looks like it evolves, so maybe, I think there's been, yeah, maybe I've seen something about this event being like a three-part event. So I guess maybe your your spawn tag will evolve, maybe. Kind of cool. Yeah, event coming, Sentinels of Light as the Blackness and Gold Terror, an ancient order must bolster its ranks to protect the fading light. Join the Sentinels in their quest to stop the ruination. Now witness their stories from the front line. Uh, begins July 9th. Oh, it also says here that they release on July 9th, I believe. Yeah, Lucian and Senna are coming on July 9th at the same time. So, oh, that's, uh, what, a week Thursday? So yeah, next Thursday. No, Friday. <laughs> so uh, Thursday night, they come out. And the next Thursday night, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. now, actually, in, uh, in Europe, if you're on the same time zone as me. Systems! 4G Wi-Fi dual connection. They're actually putting this in now. Uh, they put this in the last patch, but apparently it was like getting tested for some people and they weren't sure if it was gonna work or something. So it was like delayed on its release. Um, but either way, now they've officially added it. Uh, really cool, excited to use this feature, see if it improves my connection a bit. I do get some lag sometimes playing on Wi-Fi, so having this dual connection option seems neat. Champion changes. Draven, the glorious executioner, has been underperforming since our last round of changes. He is good on his damage, but could be more flexible in his positioning. Bumping up utility portions of Draven's kit to help him achieve glory once more. Move speed buff on Blade Ru Blood Rush. Pretty significant, actually. 10% is not nothing. Uh, this will make him feel pretty good to play. A lot, a lot better to play, I think. Uh, especially because Blood Rush is up so often because it resets whenever he catches an axe. Pretty significant buff there, actually. And a cooldown reduction on stand aside. Main in the early ranks, you normally max, max this ability last. So you're basically three seconds off in your early game. Not a huge change, I think. Situationally, it might save you from a gank or something. Maybe you get a kill from it, but traditionally you only need this like once in most fights and you won't get it more than once just because it's three seconds lower. But either way, maybe once or twice a game makes a difference. Fizz, the tidal trickster is causing too much mayhem from the jungle. 
29 damage to monsters, 50% gone on the bonus pack, <laughs> bonus damage. Um, I thought this was a cool jungle pick, to be honest. I actually haven't seen too much of it, at least in high elo, maybe in lower elo, it's performing much better. Um, it definitely does well in high elo sometimes, don't get me wrong, but I haven't actually seen it be that meta since kind of the first few days where everybody was testing it. Even in competitive, it, it isn't, hasn't been as good as it was initially. Doom was playing it quite a lot, but he hasn't played as much recently, but he's also kind of a player who jumps from champion to champion, so you can't always take his opinion <laughs> as fact. But either way, it's kind of a shame because I think this is a cool identity of his. Hopefully he'll still be able to clear the jungle at a reasonable speed and uh, he won't get entirely screwed by these changes. Garen. Garen's full tank build has been too consistent in terms of the damage output. We are making some light changes here to shift his power into building more a more into building AD to balance out the mana Demacia. Great plan. Base damage nerfs on Judgment and AD ratio increase. Base damage decrease on his ultimate at later ranks. And the missing health percent damage has also been decreased and been given a, a, a scaling ratio. And also you can no longer steal Baron and Dragon with it. Great changes actually. Really like this update to Garum. Yeah, I think the biggest issue with him is just that he can go full tank and he's still just like shitting out damage, dude. There's no other term for it. This dude's wrecking everybody. Literally one rotating any squishy with just uh, Judgment plus his ultimate. Really good changes, especially like this missing health percent change. It changes your ratio. Show. Now, if you want to do big damage as Garen, you have to build damage, and that's how it should be. This might push Garen out of the meta, kind of depends how it feels, but at the very least, he'll probably be obligated to build a damage item now. Be that Black Cleaver, be that Trinity Force, something like this. He'll probably feel like he has to do that to keep up with the uh, damage now, as opposed to just building Sunfire into full tank and... and AFKing in the brain, which I think is a great change. But maybe this this build path will be a little bit weaker and it will be harder for him to get going. Um, so he might fall down a bit in terms of like how relevant he is in the meta. Aurelia. Aurelia has been struggling to perform, especially at the highest levels of skill. Wild Rift has fewer minions per wave than PC does, so the Blade Nancer receives less healing in Wild Rift than she does on PC. To account for this, we're increasing her healing versus minions while also buffing her more skill expressive abilities. These changes help her, help her to dance around the Baron lane better. Base mana regen going up, Blade Surge base damage increase, 5 at every range. Doesn't look too significant, but it is like 15, kind of in a full rotation, which is, uh, I guess, a little bit more significant, but <laughs> still not a crazy amount. But it will mean that she probably hits a uh, breakpoint thresholds for, for Blade Surge last hits a little bit more often sometimes. Healing attack damage ratio increased by 0.5 at all ranks. That's actually pretty big. Flawless duet damage going up by 30. That is a little bit more significant. More damage at later ranks of Vanguard's Edge, 25 at rank 2, 50 at rank 3. And the Blade Wall is also dealing more damage at all ranks, 25 at all ranks. Solid changes. I have said that I feel like Aurelia, while not like a terrible champion, it does feel like you have to do a lot just to like, it feels like she has a, you have to like kind of hit everything and do so much just to put out the same as like another champion would. Like something like Yasuo or something like maybe Red Ecton. Like it feels like these champions, like even like Garen, I guess. <laughs> just like, yeah, Garen's not really the same class, but uh, these champions kind of do what she can do, but she has to put like 10 times the effort in. So I'm just glad to see them rewarding kind of the harder parts of her kit to hit, especially Flawless Duet. I think it's really difficult to hit. Consistently, so just giving it more damage is really nice. And uh, overall, yeah, just small buffs that probably make it feel a bit better and a little bit more rewarding to play, especially if you play it well. Jinx, too easy for Jinx to steal objectives with her super mega death rocket, allowing her to steal objectives away from junglers looking to smite it. That's a weird sentence. Uh, we are capping her ultimate damage versus minions, or versus monsters, sorry, to reduce her frequency of steals and make her a little less frustrating for junglers. So it looks like they're just killing all of these. Obviously, we saw Evelyn's get removed last patch, Garen's also getting removed this patch. Removing Jinx as well. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think it's not particularly fun to play against. It, you know, it's been kind of fun, I guess, for Jinx to steal them all, but it's a little bit... Yeah, it's not exactly like a fun mechanic where it's like, try to find Jinx on the minimap and everybody stands in the way and hopes that the AoE doesn't hit. It's not exactly like super skilled. Like, obviously the timing on Jinx is something, but the timing was so easy that it didn't really feel like it was much of a challenge. And now Smite is beating it at every rank, because, you know, assuming the jungler is the same level or a level above Jinx, Smite will be doing more than, than all, all, all ranks of Mega Death Rocket, but if they don't have a jungler or Smite's on cooldown or something, you can still get a reasonable steal. But overall, I think a pretty good change. Just not a very fun thing to play against, even if she is a bit less meta than she used to be. Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is hunting his prey too easily. We are lightning tooting down his power to keep the Void Reaver in check. Taste their fear base damage lowered by five at every rank. Just a small enough to Kha'Zix, I guess. It will slow down his clear a little bit as well, but it should still be pretty fine. Ramus. Ramus is rolling over his opponents too fast. We are turning down the attack speed he gains from taunting a target. So he isn't such a powerhouse with his early ganks. Frenzying attack speed. Frenzying taunt attack speed going down. I haven't really seen any Ramus personally. Maybe he's crushing, crushing silver. I don't know. I haven't really seen Ramus <laughs> do much in my games. Seen a couple of Ramus players, but 
He hasn't been like insanely impactful. So a little bit surprising to see Ramus get a nerf, but never mind. Hey, I guess he's he's doing too well somewhere. Riven. Riven is underperforming, so we're amping up her shield from Valor to help her stay sharp in the Baron lane. I, I was thinking about Quinn, but yeah, I, I, it's just uh, it just happens to be the same name. <laughs> Valor shield strength, uh, ten at all ranks. Just a slight, a small quality of life buff. I mean, not really quality of life, it is just a buff, but uh, you know, it wouldn't be super significant, but again, it should make it feel a little bit better to play, um, especially once you get the shield on a much lower cooldown. Vayne. Vayne is slightly underperforming, so we're bumping up her ability to dual squishier targets. This should help the Night Hunter stay on her feet in general, but especially early in Dragon Lane. 20 base damage in early game on Silver Bolts. 20, 15, 10, 5. That's really significant, actually. 20 base damage in the early game on uh, every third hit on the same champion is really big, actually. Big buff for Vayne here. 5 seconds on every ult rank, also pretty big. Vayne could be a lot better this patch. I think they've buffed her a few times, honestly, and she hasn't really made her way back, but she's not bad against, like, these, like, melee lanes, like Braum and, and Alistar and maybe Leona, if you see her. Like, she could kind of lay it into these kind of picks reasonably and her biggest counters like the really long range adcs like caitlin isn't in the game and stuff like ash isn't really huge a huge a huge counter so she could she could definitely see a rise in play i've definitely seen her play it a fair bit and, and looked all right a lot of the time so i think uh you know could be could be her time to shine with these early game buffs mid lane after examining the mid lane matter we believe tapping down the armor of some of the top performers will result in a more balanced state between ad mids and ap mids five armor off cat twisted fate and ziggs this is interesting. I'm not really sure what the initial ramifications of this would kind of be. Uh, to me, this feels like a big buff to champions like maybe Pantheon and Zed. I guess kind of Yasuo, but he's not really as all in, so it doesn't really seem like a huge buff to him. Um, I guess Lucian will actually benefit a lot from this, like pre preemptively. He's already really enjoying these nerfs to base armor. Outside of that, I guess Renekton maybe. It's an interesting change for sure. I guess AD mids aren't super popular necessarily. I mean, they are fairly popular. I don't know. It seems weird to me. Uh, Aurelia, also a big buff too. I think the biggest hit here is for like Ziggs and TF. I guess for Kat, she, she already kind of struggles in these melee matchups and now they'll be even harder. So these AD matchups. Um, but TF and Ziggs are normally picked fairly often into these AD champions. So I guess a pretty significant change to their matchups. So they'll be able to get all in a lot easier now and take a lot more damage. Be curious to see what the, the outcome is. Not really sure of the motivation. I mean, I guess they say it, but it still just seems a bit weird to me. We have ARAM changes. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you're interested in those. I've never played a game of ARAM, so... <laughs> uh, gameplay changes. Runes resolve second wind. Second wind is a bit too strong, so we're nudging it down to bring it in line with the other resolve runes. We've also found a bug in this tooltip that made it read stronger than it actually was for melee champions. We updated the tooltip to accurately to reflect its functionality. Passive regen from 6 HP to 5 HP after taking damage from a champion regenerate 3 plus 1.5% over 10 seconds, which is doubled and it said 6 plus 3. But the actual healing isn't changed. Uh, I think that part is what feels really strong about it, but I guess, yeah, some, just a raw reduction of second wind. I think second wind does feel really strong, especially if you're a melee champion. But I think this part is the bigger aspect, generally. I guess it depends how well you're juggling damage, like if you're taking poke and going out, and then taking poke and going out, and consistently getting the second wind prop. I guess for players who aren't min-maxing it as much, this is a pretty big nerf then. There's one HP every five seconds. That's, uh, you know... Six HP. Twelve HP a minute. I could do math. Don't do- don't do YouTube math. What are you thinking? What are you thinking trying to add in your head while recording a video, you psychopath? Um, and then extra bits, Smite's tooltip now correctly, correctly reflects its mana regen, and Evelyn's ult uh, shows that only does bonus damage to champions, because they removed that last patch. And then there's the free provide rotation. So, 2.3b, pretty interesting patch. Biggest winners, Vayne, maybe Aurelia, Draven, I guess, will feel definitely better. Don't know if he'll be, like, sick, but I think the champion's already pretty good, people who are really good at it, so... You know, Garen, definitely a big loser. Could see him disappear entirely, honestly. I think his build path will change dramatically, and he could entirely disappear, who knows. But yeah, Lucian and Senna coming. Cool patch, pretty excited. Definitely excited to play some Lucian. And yeah, that's all we've got. Uh, thank you guys very much for checking out this patch review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.